What if I told you that the moon, our quiet, pale companion in the night sky, was once a world of fire? Not just volcanoes, not just lava flows, but a literal ocean of magma stretching across its entire surface, churning, glowing, reshaping itself for millions of years. It sounds like science fiction. But in June 2024, China's Chang'e 6 mission returned to Earth with something extraordinary. Nearly two kilograms of lunar soil and rock, not from the moon's familiar near side, but from the mysterious far side, a place no human or robot had ever sampled before. And what these ancient rocks reveal may rewrite our understanding of how the moon, and maybe even the Earth, were born. In today's episode, we'll dive into a wild scientific theory, the magma ocean hypothesis, and the brand new evidence that might finally prove it's real. You might never look at the moon the same way again. In May 2024, China launched a mission unlike any before. Chang'e 6, named after the moon goddess of Chinese mythology, was sent to do something no other spacecraft had ever done, land on the far side of the moon, collect samples, and bring them back to Earth. The far side isn't just darker or more mysterious, it's scientifically different. Its surface is older, its crust is thicker, and its volcanic history may hold clues about the moon's deepest secrets. That's why Chang'e 6 targeted a special place, the Apollo Basin, inside the massive South Pole Aitken Basin, one of the largest and oldest impact craters in the solar system. The idea? That the crust there might be thin enough to expose materials from deep within the moon, untouched for billions of years. After a delicate landing, a robotic arm drilled, scooped, and stored nearly 1.9 kilograms of lunar soil and rock. And when that capsule returned to Earth, it carried more than just dust and stone. It carried a time capsule from the moon's fiery past. Scientists believe the moon wasn't always cold and gray. In fact, billions of years ago, it may have been glowing. According to the magma ocean hypothesis, when the moon first formed, possibly from a colossal impact between Earth and a Mars-sized object, it was so hot its surface turned into a sea of molten rock, a global ocean of magma. As this fiery sea began to cool, something amazing happened. Minerals started to crystallize. Heavy ones sank toward the center, forming the moon's mantle. Lighter ones floated to the top, creating its crust. But the real magic was in what was left behind, a strange mixture of radioactive elements like uranium, thorium, and potassium, collectively called creep. Creep materials didn't fit neatly into the early crystal structures, so they got trapped between the layers and became a kind of leftover soup from the moon's formation. This magma ocean idea isn't just poetic. It explains many things. Why the moon's crust is so different from its interior. Why there are volcanic rocks rich in strange elements. And why scientists are so eager to find proof. For decades, we only had samples from one side of the moon. But now, we have the other side. When scientists opened the Chang'e 6 sample capsule, they weren't just looking at moon dust. They were holding ancient time capsules, untouched for billions of years. Inside, they found volcanic rock, basalt, that had formed from molten magma. Using radiometric dating, they measured its age, 2.82 billion years old. That's relatively young for the moon, which means the volcanic activity that produced this basalt lasted far longer than we once thought. But that's just the beginning. The rock's chemistry told an even deeper story. It contained K-R-E-E-P elements, those same radioactive leftovers from the moon's magma ocean. And here's the twist. The composition of these rocks collected from the far side of the moon, was strikingly similar to samples from the near side, gathered decades ago by Apollo missions and China's Chang'e 5. For scientists, that similarity was electrifying, because it means the magma that once flowed beneath the moon's surface didn't just form in isolated pockets. 
It flowed everywhere, across the entire moon. These rocks, quiet, dusty, unassuming, might just be the strongest evidence yet that the moon was once completely covered by a global ocean of fire. But there was one more surprise waiting inside those lunar rocks. When scientists analyzed how the basalt had crystallized, they found something strange. The rocks from the far side of the moon had formed at lower temperatures than those from the near side. That might not sound like much, but it could mean the moon's internal heat isn't evenly distributed. The far side may be cooler, geologically speaking. Why? One idea is that radioactive elements like uranium and thorium, which generate heat, are simply less concentrated on the far side. Another possibility, the giant impact that formed the South Pole Aitken Basin altered the moon's interior, changing how heat flows beneath the surface. Either way, this finding challenges the old assumption that the moon is geologically symmetrical. It's not. It's lopsided, not just on the surface, but deep inside. And that opens up entirely new questions about how the moon formed and how it evolved. These discoveries aren't just about rocks, they're about origins. By studying the moon, we're looking into the early history of the solar system, a time when planets were forming, colliding, evolving. The moon preserves a geological record that Earth, with its active tectonics and atmosphere, has long erased. And the similarities between the near and far side basalts? They don't just support the magma ocean theory, they strengthen the idea that the moon formed from a giant impact with the early Earth. That means, in a very real sense, the moon is part of us. Understanding how it cooled, how its insides evolved, how heat and chemistry shaped its crust, it's not just about the moon, it's about learning how Earth became Earth. These 1.9 kilograms of ancient rock are more than samples. They're keys to our planetary past, and they might be laying the groundwork for what comes next. Human missions, lunar bases, and perhaps one day, a permanent presence on the moon. Billions of years ago, the moon may have been a sea of fire. Today, it's silent, cratered, and cold, but not dead. Beneath its surface lie stories still untold. Heat still flows. Mysteries still wait. And now, for the first time, we have a voice from the far side. A handful of rocks that speak of magma oceans, radioactive secrets, and a deep, shared origin with Earth. With Chang'e 6, we've taken one step closer to understanding our moon. Not just as a satellite, but as a witness to cosmic history. And this is only the beginning. Coming up next, China's Tianwen. Two Mission is already en route to a mysterious asteroid that dances beside Earth like a ghost, a quasi-moon. What secrets might it hold? And how could it reshape everything we know about the solar system? Stay curious. Stay with us. And if you enjoyed this journey, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, because the universe is big but wonder is meant to be shared.